Hello everybody. This is a short video to show about how I go fl about flanging lightning holes for my Bearhawk Patrol. So what I've done is I've taken the cutting template that I use, the cutting jig, that I cut out all of my rib blanks for the patrol. And I have now taken it over the router table and using a 45 degree chamfer bit, I've chamfered the edge of the lightning holes so that I have my proper amount of overhang, the 3 eighths of an inch overhang. So, I, so my, my chamfer here goes 3 eighths inch of an in, of 3 eighths of an inch in from the edge of the hole. So I've done this on all four of my holes and I've done it on both the, what I'll create as the left and the right side. So, and I've marked this one as the right side flange. So once I've done that, I then will start off with taking my, my blank. And now I'm going to take it and I'm going to actually flange it in a press. And I use a specific metal method called a rubber mat pressing. Um, it's an idea that I got from the EAA forum on one of their videos. I've modified it slightly for my use and it's worked really well for me. What I'm going to end up with is a, a center rib that has the four lightning holes completely flanged. So let's go show about how I'm about doing that. So I'm going to take my 025 aluminum and I'm going to put it onto my, my flanging die, which used to be my cutting jig. What I've done is I've taken some quarter inch bolts and I've ground the head down so there's a little bit thinner. It's only about the eighth, the eighth of an inch thick. And then I've also ground it down so it's, it's a little smoother. This way it won't damage my rubber quite so much. I take a washer and I place this through the jig hole into my jig on both of the on two of the jig holes. Then what I do because I'm going to be flipping this upside down is I take some packing tape and hold the the jig pins in place. And also this will allow me to hold the, the center rib onto the form. I fold over the edge of the tape on the bottom so it makes it a little bit easier to get out of the jig. The next step is I'll take it over to the press. Harbor Freight Hydraulic Press that I've made a few modifications to. I've replaced the 20 ton normal hydraulic jack with a 20 ton, ton air hydraulic bottle jack. That way I can use air to assist me in actually pumping it down so I don't have to go forever with the hand jack on jacking this down. I've then taken two 12 inch by 12 inch, 3 quarter inch steel plates that was basically from a scrap yard that I was able to get cut to size and I've mounted. One of them is just setting on the bottom of the, of the, of the hydraulic press and the other one what I did is I basically suspended it. I threaded two quarter inch holes on the edge and I basically have it suspended slightly underneath the piston. This makes it easier so I don't have to remove and add it back all the time. I then have two pieces of rubber here. This piece of rubber is a piece of polyurethane rubber. I got it from McBaster Car. And um, underneath is a piece of um, neoprene rubber. Um, I was trying different hardnesses of rubber, and this polyurethane is recommended normally, and it's what I used. I believe the hardness of this was a um, 50 or a 60. I believe it was a 60. And I believe this one down here I tried was a 30. 30 is too soft. The 60 was really good. Um, 55, would, I think, is ideal, what a lot of people use. So then I place this onto, onto my hydraulic press here. And so then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to stick the form, the form block in here, and we'll see, it, we'll see that work. So now I have my form block, my center rib blank uh, with the flanging holes here, and it adhered. And now I'm going to put a little lubrication on this to make it a little bit easier so it doesn't hang up on the rubber. What I use for that is a simple lemon pledge. Take my form and I place it, make sure the metal side down against the rubber, and I'm going to center each hole underneath the press. So I'm going to approximate center with my finger and I'm going to pump it down.
Done the first hole. Release the press. Up to a pretty fine mark I had to make it easier. Center it again. Do the second hole. I now have four perfectly made flanges. The next step that I'll need to do is remove it from here, and then I'll need to straighten the I'll need to straighten out this jig, the straighten out the holes a little bit. The, there's some stresses that are put in here by pressing it, and it causes it to potato chip just a little bit. Um, it's not a, there's not a lot that you have to do there. It's pretty simple to get this part of it done. So now that I have it here, I'm going to clean off the lemon pledge. Makes the shop smell nice too as a side effect. Move the jig pins. And you notice there's a slight, there's a slight curve to it now, not a whole lot. A slight amount that I'll need to remove, and I'll use the bob stick to remove this. First, what I need to make it easier, I'm going to go ahead and remove the plastic coating that's on that's on the grip. So it helps to just simply place it here, and now what I'm going to use is the bob stick to adjust it. And I'll go over each area. You can see there's this little bit of lift in here. And what I do is just basically lift up with the bob stick on the back to relieve some of the stresses. So the center one is lifting not much, about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. This is not too bad. So I'll do a little bit of stress relieving on both sides. Now it sits down very nicely. And as I get to the front, they're a little bit stirred. There's a little bit more stresses in it. So I'll relieve this one slightly. That's perfect. And the front ones.
So now I've removed the, 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 uh, the potato chipping across the center. And uh, now the next step is I will, I will do the flanges on the edge of this. And I'll show you how to do that one next. Thank you very much.